When it comes to stars inside our galaxy, they all obviously move at different velocities, but some stars here move very fast, much faster than anything else. As a matter of fact, some stars here move so fast that they become what's known as hypervelocity stars, escaping the galaxy and essentially traveling across the universe between various galaxies without having permanent homes. And naturally these stars form a bit of a mystery in terms of their origin. What exactly causes their velocities? And more importantly, can we actually learn something about them by tracing back their origin and by figuring out where they came from? Or maybe we can even discover some kind of a mysterious object that caused them to have these velocities in the process uncovering something we never knew existed. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing this relatively new study that essentially focuses on new analysis and new observations of the phenomenon known as the runaway star. Extremely fast moving stars across the entire galaxy that in some cases create these very beautiful effects such as the one you see right here. This is actually a shockwave nebula resulting from a runaway star. But more specifically, this recent study tried to figure out what causes most of these stars to acquire these high velocities. They did this by using statistics and by using the recent observations from the Gaia telescope. And their conclusion so far seems to be pretty intriguing. But before we talk about the conclusion, let's discuss the definition and why we believe these stars acquire such velocities. So actually, to date, the vast majority of runaway stars were not discovered by themselves in the middle of the galaxy, but instead were usually found in various very active molecular clouds with a lot of massive stars in the middle. This one is actually the most famous and the largest one, the star cluster R136 in the middle of the Large Magellanic Cloud. And there's actually a really famous example right in the Orion Nebula of three stars moving in opposite directions at approximately 100 km per second, AE Auriga, 53 Arietis, and Mu Columbi. They're all moving away from a central point that they left approximately 2 million years ago. And their path traces back right to the center of this beautiful structure, the famous Barnard's Loop, believed to be a result of a supernova approximately 2 million years ago. And so today it's believed that many of these stars are very likely launched into these high velocities by some kind of a major catastrophic event, such as a nearby supernova from a certain type of a star. And because in most cases, these runaway stars or high velocity stars generally seem to come from molecular clouds, it presents a pretty standard scenario. Different stars form in a relatively similar location, one of them becomes massive enough to go supernova and pushes the rest, sending them on their way across the galaxy and possibly even outside of the galaxy. Or at least that's one of the possible ways. The other way involves some kind of a gravitational interaction between multiple stars. And if a star moves very close to, for example, a binary star system, it can actually get such a dramatic kick out of the system that it's going to acquire hundreds of kilometers per second in terms of velocity. So basically the other explanation here is close encounters of various stars in various star forming clusters. But interestingly, at least one of these stars was suggested to have been formed through a passage extremely close to an intermediate sized black hole. In other words, by flying really close to a black hole, it might have acquired a tremendous velocity, eventually escaping the galaxy. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And the interaction with these supermassive black holes in the center might actually be one of the main ways how some stars acquire insanely high velocities. Such as for example this star right here discovered back in 2019. Its velocity is nearly 1800 km per second and it was most likely ejected from the center of the galaxy by the interaction with Sagittarius A star. And a few similar stars have been discovered in the last few years, including a star known as US 708, also moving at over a thousand kilometers per second. And so these hypervelocity stars with thousands of kilometers per second in velocity very likely can only be produced by supermassive black holes. But what about the ones that are not as fast? Because even though there are only about 20 hypervelocity stars, with potentially thousand existing in total, when it comes to runaway stars that can still escape the galaxy but do not move as fast, quite a few have been discovered in the last few years and up to a million possibly exists in the entire galaxy. Here's a really beautiful image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope showing us four individual runaway stars resembling comets. And this is because they're actually speeding through interstellar gas forming these beautiful comet-like tails. 
And so quite a few of these have been discovered in the past, and surprisingly, they generally tend to be really massive and also extremely bright. Most of them are either O-type stars or B-type stars, essentially being some of the brightest, some of the hottest and potentially even most massive stars in the cluster where they came from, with pretty much most of them surprisingly being very similar to one another and usually at least a few masses of the Sun, suggesting there is some kind of a shared mechanism responsible for forming most of these objects. And initially it was believed to be supernova, mostly because of discoveries like this. This here shows us the motion of a neutron star that was discovered to be moving at 1500 km per second. And this neutron star at some point was a much more massive object that must have gone supernova. And so for many years supernova were always the biggest culprits. Maybe supernova exploding in various vicinities of various stars produce these fast moving objects. But the thing is, to nudge some of these more massive stars, you would require an extremely powerful supernova. And it would have to happen quite a lot, because we seem to observe so many runaway stars in so many different locations. And so the scientists behind this recent study wanted to investigate, so what exactly is happening to these stars, or to be more exact, how exactly do they form? Supernova, some kind of a gravitational interaction, black holes, or maybe something else. And so they conducted a relatively thorough search by using several separate surveys and the data from the Gaia telescope. Here they used two major databases for different types of stars, very well known databases that you can find in the description, and they wanted to compare this data with the motions from the Gaia telescope to try to find more of these stars and to essentially come to a conclusion in regards to their origin. And their discoveries were maybe somewhat surprising. Of all of the new O-type stars they've discovered, 25% were all runaway stars. Whereas when it comes to the smaller B-type stars, even here at least 5% were also runaway stars as well. Here they found at least 42 new O-type stars and 47 new B-type stars. But I guess the biggest question is, why exactly so many massive stars, especially O-type stars, become runaways? Well here it's all about the way that these stars form. Based on various observations from a lot of different molecular clouds, we know that generally these massive stars never form alone. Here's the beautiful example from the genes web of the cluster inside R136. These stars form not just as binaries but as multiple star systems with many extremely close to one another. And so by being born inside these clusters, most of these O-type stars have a very very high chance of one day being kicked out. And that does not require any supernova just an interaction with a neighbor nearby. And some of the kicks they get from these regions are very high, hundreds of kilometers per second, if not higher. But these unusual star clusters usually have a name. They're actually known as OB associations, associations of O and B stars, with the O-type stars, the more massive ones, usually being much more prominent. And so if most of these stars were the result of supernova, because B-type stars are less massive, we would actually be seeing more of them as opposed to O-type stars. It's a little bit easier to nudge a smaller object to high velocities compared to a large one. But because we're seeing more O-type stars and not B-type stars, or in other words because much more massive stars seem to be more prominent in eventually becoming runaway stars, the only natural explanation here is that this is just a result of an OB association interaction when many many of these stars gravitationally pull at one another with one at some point just getting slingshot out of here, making this the most likely explanation. Not supernova, not black holes, just gravitational interaction with the neighbors. And based on the sheer numbers, it seems to be an extremely effective way to create these runaway stars. It looks like at least one fourth of all of the stars is at some point going to escape acquiring high velocities, but possibly not high enough to escape the galaxy, just high enough to create beautiful formations in the galaxy and to then potentially go supernova somewhere else. Although here that's one of the bigger questions. What happens to these stars at the end and what influence do they have on the rest of the galaxy as they escape from their cloud? Since this seems to be an extremely common phenomenon, it would be interesting to find out where they all end up eventually, or what they produce at the end. For now nobody really knows, but I'm sure we'll discover more as Gaia collects even more data and as one day we might discover a lot of other stars that might represent the end story for a lot of these runaways. But based on the results from this study, I guess it's exciting to find out that this unusual type of a star moving ridiculously fast but also being bright and hot can easily be explained by a relatively simple interaction inside a large star cluster where all of them possibly came from. Nothing extraordinary required, 
no black holes, no supernova. On that note, check out some of the previous discoveries on a similar topic in the description below, including some of the fastest stars we've discovered in the Milky Way to date. One of them is actually moving at a ridiculously fast velocity of nearly 10% of the speed of light. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.